Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspirational Moments. I am Reverend Glendale Miller from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. This program is designed to inspire, motivate, and encourage as you make a difference right where you are. I invite you in prayer. Our Father and our God, how grateful we are for yet another marvelous day that you have made, a day that we have never seen before. We seek your blessings, your benediction. Do for us what we are unable to do for ourselves. This we ask in your Son's name. Amen. This morning I wish to extend a warm welcome to all of you sharing these precious moments with us and I do hope and pray that our time together is refreshing and inspiring for all of you. I point you this morning for our devotion to the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and our text for the morning is found in verse number 5. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me? and have walked after vanity, and are become vain. Let me repeat that again. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity and are become vain. The Lord has inspired me to share with you this morning from the subject, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. There's a story about a group of scientists who decided that humans could do without God. So one of them looked up to God and said, we've decided that we no longer need you. We have enough wisdom to clone people, and to do many miraculous things. God listened patiently and then said, Verily well, let's have a man-making contest. We'll do it just like I did back in the old days with Adam. The scientists agreed. And one of them bent down and picked up a handful of dirt. God looked at him and said, No, you have to make your own dirt. In Jeremiah's day, the Israelites were living as if they no longer needed the Lord. They had entrusted themselves to other gods, even though their gods could not respond to their needs. 
Jeremiah confronted them about their rebellion. For they had forsaken the true God and shown disrespect for him. In Jeremiah chapter 2 and verses 13 and also in verse number 19. In chapter 5, Jeremiah confronts Israel regarding her wrongdoing. What injustice have your fathers found in me? God declares that they have gone far from me. God called the house of Israel to account for their rejection of him and their pursuit of idols. He asks to know what fault there was in him that caused their adultery. What a question raised by an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. Are we guilty of living as if we don't need God? We may know him as Savior, but continue, we continue to worship the idol of wisdom and self-sufficiency. The Lord is saying to us, at this hour they have gone far from me. Unless we worship only God, our lives cannot be truly free, for we were made for him alone. All else is but idolatry. The idols of self is a is an attempt to substitute God. We want a God of convenience, a God that we can control, a God that we humans can direct. I want to submit to us, brothers and sisters, that we need to acknowledge that science conforms to divine law. A scientist is one who determines how things function. For example, a physician studies the human body to see how its members work and interrelate with themselves and their environment. Although we may not understand the laws discovered, the scientist accepts them as facts. Since the laws are dependable, the scientist should be the first to acknowledge a supreme lawgiver and be in awe of his complex design. Just the opposite occurs, brothers and sisters, as described in Romans 1 verses 21 through 32. Man become intoxicated with his discoveries 
that he worships the creation as well as his own abilities to perceive it rather than the true object of devotion, which is the creator. The second thing I see is man is deceived when he disregards God. What is translated be not deceived in Galatians 6 and 7 have the negative which implies the possibility of deception. As humans in the present environment in which we live, it is possible for us to be deluded. The Greek verb may be taken as present indicative, indicating the possibility of continuous deception, or as the imperative, do not be deceived. The voice of the verb can be interpreted as either passive, do not be deceived by others, or as a middle voice, don't deceive yourselves. We are thus not to wonder why, wonder away from our worship of God. Paul continues, in Galatians, be not deceived. God is not mocked. This verb is derived from nose and sneeze, denoting displeasure. In our idiom, we would say not to turn up our nose or look down at God. In Greek, the word God does not have the definite article in front of it, referring to God in his totality, eternal, infinite, omnipotent. It is foolhardy for men to turn up their nose at such a God. The consequences of man's contempt are certain. In Romans 1, Paul describes how God gives man up to his depravity and its bitter rewards. A present application is the epidemic of AIDS spread primarily by those promoting a certain type of sexuality or sexual behavior. A more general rule is stated in Galatians 6 and 7, for whosoever, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We cannot fool God. His laws apply to our lives as well as to the realm of nature. We turn up our nose at him only to our own detriment. And so there is a challenge in Jeremiah's words in his second chapter and verse number two. Jeremiah wants to know, as God has inspired him, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? What fault, what shortcoming? What mischief, missteps, God is asking man I'm guilty of that has caused you 
to drift so far from me. This word this morning challenges all of us to take another look at our position in God, to re-evaluate our relationships with God, to look carefully at our motives of why we serve, why we do what we do. Is it as Jeremiah is speaking that we have found some flaw in God? And we all know There are no flaws in our God. All of us need him. All of us need him. And that ought to be our prayer. Every morning throughout the day, straight into the night. I need you. I don't know how you feel about it this morning. I would not have made it if I did not have God on my side. Let's stop pointing fingers. Let's stop blaming God. Let's stop picking fights with God and declare that God, I need thee. Glory to God. I need thee. Our Father, I thank you this morning. that I speak on behalf of your people that they have missed the mark and have made mistakes and have not done all that they promised to do. But Father, I bring their concerns to you this morning and ask that you would cleanse them, you would purge them, you would wash them in your precious blood. Father, we need you right this very moment to do it for us, to do it for us, to do it for us, to do it for us. We are like a ship without a sail. We need you to Do it for us, God. Our lives are a total wreck. We are a total disappointment if you are not guiding us, if you are not steering our ship, God. And so we ask that you would take full control of our destiny, take full control of our walk, take full control of our ever every movement as we move about each day, God. And we pause now to say, God, we need you. Yes, we need you. Hallelujah. We need you. We need you. Oh, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Hallelujah. Every hour, every hour. Every hour, Lord, I need, I need Thee, oh, bless, right now, right now, right now, I can't wait for tomorrow, see, tomorrow is not promised, I need you to do it. Right this very moment, right now, right now, right now, right now, 
right this very moment. Do it right now. Do it right now. Don't you procrastinate. Don't you hesitate. Tell him right now. I need you, God. I need you. I need you right now. 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 Hallelujah. Every hour, every hour, every second, every minute of the day, I need you. Glory to God. I need you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Father, we give you all the honor and the praise now. All the honor and the praise now. All the honor and the praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen to me, my family. If you've never made a confession of faith, if you've never done it before, if you've never done it before, if you've never done it before, all you just need to do is ask him right now, Lord, come into my life. Make me a brand new. Listen, God, I need you. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Salvation has come to your house at this hour. If you wish to correspond with Reverend Glenn, his mailing address is GE Miller 64 at hotmail.com or you can telephone him at 467-8939. We'll talk with you again tomorrow with another inspirational message from God's Word. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be yours now and always. Have yourselves a good morning.